I don't know. So, what we're doing right now is I brought my, I'll admit, pretty bad summoner build into a tier 61 dungeon to get a better idea of what it can do. The basic premise is I want this to be quote unquote a real summoner. I want to be relying on summoner abilities and I want the summons to be doing the biggest portion of the damage. To be able to support that, we are using things that make sense. Bone Storm for our Golem to be able to do more damage, applying a ton of vulnerable and crit damage where we can. I'm using Blighted to get the biggest like multiplier I can put on my character at any given time. And that's giving them 30% of it. If you haven't seen my video about how minions work, I recommend checking it out. Uh, the only things that are different from that video, which I think I've since confirmed after that, is that your minions gain 30% of your bonus critical strike damage. And I believe that they start with the typical 50% base crit damage. After that, they receive 100% of your vulnerable damage for whatever reason. So we're kind of trying to abuse that fact a little bit. And like I said, trying to give them as many multipliers as possible. Now, I think that the gear that I have is very, very suboptimal. I think that the Paragon board that I have is uh, pretty garbage considering I don't have their glyphs currently leveled up. I'm using good glyphs since the benefits that they get are 30% of any additive bonuses that we get. So like control is a really good glyph. They're getting 30% of my control glyph. But I would like to have mages, uh, golem or hulking, whatever it's called, and warriors all leveled up and in the Paragon board. We are using good Paragon boards in general. Scent of Death, Flesh Eater, uh, the base Paragon board, obviously, and then Cult Leader and Hulking Monstrosity is our last one. To be able to get the Glyph in and the Legendary Node. And just trying to support them with like a base shadow setup in our skills. And kind of hoping that that's like enough to buoy up their damage. Trying to get like constant stacking of corpse tendrils in Bone Storm using Decrepify for massive cooldown reduction and just kind of constantly crowd controlling. You'll see on this, we've already cast Bone Storm twice during this fight. And we're approaching our third time of casting it, only down to 20 seconds, so that's pretty good. It's already like a pretty strong component of the build in general. And here's the big thing that you need to understand about what they changed, because it doesn't seem like they really buffed minions altogether that much. Although I do think that there was like a bit of a shadow buff to their overall AI and aggressiveness. But while I was going to test the minions, I wanted to see just how valuable the minions will engage on cursed enemies was. And my minions were just kind of running off and attacking monsters much more aggressively than they have ever done in the past. I have had my golems and my minions literally standing still while I've been getting attacked previously. My minions actively engaged on monsters which were within range who had not attacked me yet. So that is already like a marked increase. But the way that this curse change has worked, it's that it will engage your monsters in combat. You can't target a monster with it. Like you can't say like, oh, only attack that monster over there. If your monsters are already engaged in combat, they won't reprioritize the cursed targets. They won't go off and like now only go fight them instead. It just gets them into combat. So it's not quite exactly what we need, but it's a fairly good compromise point. The developers have made it like abundantly clear in how they've communicated about minions in general that they, for whatever reason, don't seem to want to already give us the ability to force our minions to target specific monsters. I'm not sure why. I think ultimately that would be the best change that they could do. But for whatever reason, they aren't quite at the place where they want to do that. What they gave us is this compromise. This willingness to say, okay, we know you need them to be more proactive. Here's what we'll do. So when I cast this curse and they go off to fight the monsters that I've cursed, again, that is already a market improvement. I don't think it's enough, but it is much better. So we have monsters just on the edge of the screen. I curse them, my monsters run up and engage. You then also get the benefit of it already engages your golem, and then you can choose to either save the golem activation or use the golem activation in tandem with it. 
so it gives you a little bit more viability of how often you can engage fights. It does require you to use a curse. Using a curse always made sense on summons, especially since you can abuse the fact that thorns on your minions procs Abhorrent Decrepify for cooldown reduction. You are always going to use it. I don't like that it pigeonholes you into a use, but you'll see. I curse that monster over there, and they engage the closest targets, which were these monsters over here. So again, not perfect, not really a targeting system. It's an engagement system. And at least for right now, that's kind of good enough. Not quite, but it's kind of good enough. I need more time. Now let's talk about how good are minions? They're okay. They haven't secretly magically started doing a ton of damage. There wasn't any secret buffs to that. Now again, I don't have my Paragon boards with all the perfect lifts in it, so their damage is going to get a bit better. I wouldn't call it good as it stands right now, but it's better. At least it's more consistent just because of the fact that you can target with it. So I guess like, let's go fight a boss and, and see what it does. And then we can talk about the gear, the stats, the aspects, um, how I have the Paragon set up, how I want to have the Paragon set up, and what I think might be your best options. And then you can try to pilot this. Cause again, it's not great. It's not bad. Tier 61, I have really, really trash gear on right now. I cannot stress this enough. I oddly enough, don't have a ton of summoning Necromancer gear, just kind of at my beck and call. Oh, we're applying stagger at a pretty good rate. Got a bunch of corpses up. About to stagger the boss. Got stagger up. Dump in with a ton of corpse explosions. Skeletons are attacking decently fast. They're on a bone storm. This isn't the worst kill speed I've seen. It isn't great kill speed. It's not the worst kill speed I've ever seen. Staggered him again. Pretty safe. Tier 61 done. I think I want to start with the skill tree because I want to show you the build that I'm trying to put together that I think exemplifies the minions, empowers the minions, and that uh, makes it so that the minions are foremost or are front as far as like damage, CC, and like all of that is concerned. And we're just kind of trying to support them. Like really trying to live out like this like summoner fantasy, being like a master of the undead. And again, just to very quickly show you, we're not using Mendel. I could easily slot in Mendel to this build, throw on Bone Spear, put on a ton of lucky hit, and my minions will apply the Mendel ring a whole bunch, and they would do much better than what you just saw here. Again, the issue is that Mendel doesn't scale off them, it scales off of you. It has nothing to do with them. All you need them to do is like stand up, so you put in some survivability. Their damage wouldn't matter, what they do on the battlefield wouldn't matter. You would just be a Bone Spear build that's proccing Mendel. I'm not saying that that is a bad build. I, th I think it's a great build. I think it's a very good build. Me, personally, I do not consider it to be a summoner build because the minions aren't the thing doing it, it's the ring itself. That's the same reason why I'm not currently using the Death Speaker amulet. The Death Speaker amulet doesn't proc off of your minions, it does your overpower damage on top of them. So while it's really good for a blood build, that can be using minions, absolutely. And I think that one's a little bit closer to like being a necromancer summoner, for whatever that means. Like this is like a pure thematic semantic argument. It's just like pedantry at its best. But I want the minions to be the ones doing damage. So I'm trying to empower them to do damage and not my gear. So to that effort, we need enough points here and the three points into huge flesh. So we need six points to get down to here. That's the reason why we have this. We're not using any of these, obviously. You don't need to worry about using any of these skills. If you were like a pure shadow build, sure, you can use Sever and Blight, no problem, easy peasy. Again, I wanna be a summoner that's doing the summons, doing the damage, etc. Down here, we come into Corpse Explosion. I'm immediately shooting my own argument in the foot. I know that Corpse Explosion is doing a lot of the damage that we're applying. It's just the best vessel that also supplements our minions' damage, that helps us to actually activate them in ways that are truly empowering, and actually put out some damage, because we're going to be a Shadow Blight build, uh, mostly because Kalan's Edict is trash. I'm sorry, even with the buff that they just put to it, you very rarely are going like more than two seconds without being like hit or taking damage in any way, shape or form. And if the biggest payoff for not being attacked at all is they gain some attack speed, I'd literally rather just use Army of the Dead and Unyielding Commander. And you can see I don't value doing that enough to warrant putting it onto my gear and in my skill bar. So I I just don't know why Kalan Zedek says this. It needs to say anything else. This just isn't a key passive. 
We were initially going to be building into thorns, and the irony that I found out is the best way to build a minion build is to permanently be applying vulnerable and crowd control so your minions can actually hit stuff and do damage. If everything is permanently crowd controlled, or at least as close to it as possible, thorns damage doesn't work. On top of that, if you're trying to use something like Razor Plate, you physically cannot survive an end game like Nightmare Dungeon pushing, you just can't. Now that being said, could you do it for speed farming? Absolutely. Bare minimum, I'm putting the points in here just to help supplement our minion damage in any way, shape, or form, and at least having one source of thorns makes it so that Abhorrent Decrepify procs whenever thorns procs on your minions. So this could be a one point just to be able to activate it if you don't have thorns on your gear, but that's why we're using it. Obviously, three points into Skeleton Mastery, Decrepify for all the great things that Decrepify does, and the Amplify Damage to increase their damage by a third of the bonus that we get. Remember, anything that we get as a damage bonus, they get 30%. Anything that they get specifically as a damage bonus is 100%. So just try to keep that in mind whenever you're looking at these damage numbers. And then Death's Embrace for a little bit of survivability for us and just a little bit of extra percentile damage for them. Corpse Tendrils for Vulnerable. Makes sense. Then we're going into a single point of Necrotic Carapace. This allows us to fortify while our Reapers are generating corpses, which is just like super primo good. And then one point into the two Shadow Abilities, as well as Terror, and then three points into Gloom. Now here's the problem. We were using Shadow Mages. Shadow Mages would help to benefit from Gloom, but nothing else that your minions do are Shadow Damage, so you, you really can't look to this place for additional damage. I swap back over to Cold Mages just to have like more permanent uptime on CC and Vulnerable, because that very quickly became obvious like what was the best option for us as far as like overall survivability and functionality of the build. There was a world where I was thinking about going like full in on blood orbs and then bone spirit and then blood artisans cure us and then basically just perma spamming corpse tendrils, picking up the blood orbs in blood mist and being kind of like an infinimist minion build, which I think is a thing. And in fact, if you're trying it out, you'll probably find out it is a thing. Again, that's not like that's not minion enough for me. I'm trying to make minions do things to see what their upper potential is, because there's a bunch of ways to use them as utility. I want to use them as actual damage. Sadly, they don't really do damage, but that doesn't mean we're going to give up on it. Down into the ultimate paragon, you'll see that we're using Bone Storm. We also have Bone Storm as a darkness skill that helps to proc Shadow Blight a ton, as well as giving a pretty decent damage buff to our golem in general, and then gaining us obviously the crit chance, which they get 30% of that and then gaining us the damage reduction, which is super nice. Also, just having like two bone storms up in the middle of everything just adds on a ton of good AoE damage. So continuously spamming that like you saw in the gameplay makes a lot of sense to me. You'll see that we have the three points into Inspiring Leader as well as the three points into Death's Defense. Death's Defense helps them to not get one shot. Inspiring Leader gets them attack speed and us attack speed, which is good for our animations. I don't really find that Bonded in Essence does anything that I personally care about. Increasing their healing once every five seconds is trash. Literally just resumming them ends up being more efficient than trying to heal them through the damage that they're taking. Maybe dropping these all together? You know what? I'm actually just going to hard commit to that. Three points into Hellbent Commander. I ended up being near my minions more often than I thought I was going to be. I'm just going to take the points out of there right now and call it a day. In the Paragon Tree, again, the glyphs that you're going to see are not going to make the most sense. I want to get in Dead Razor. I just do not currently have this leveled. I think I would also want to get in Golem for their additional damage and then potentially Warrior. Reapers do AoE attacks. This might be the best way of like scaling their damage in general. I would like to put those into the board. What we have in the board right now are good things that also help us. There's a world where maybe you just use Dead Razor and then every other glyph should be like actually targeted at you because again, they get 30% of whatever you get. I have control in here right now. When monsters are crowd controlled, they get 30% of my 133% damage as an additional additive multiplier. That on top of that, the secondary effect just gives them 20% damage when things are frozen or stunned and things are perpetually frozen and stunned. So I deal an additional 20% damage, they deal an additional 20% damage. That one applies directly to them. Into Flesh Eater, this is where we currently have Mage. I was going to level up Mage. I don't think I want to have Mage here really at all now that I think about it. Just as an example, I would probably put a Magic Node Glyph into here so that you get the additional bonuses on the damage to elites as well as the resistances, etc. But whatever good intelligence node here would be great. And then obviously picking up the actual legendary nodes so that you get that massive damage boost as you're sitting there spamming corpse explosion. Yes, I take the increased attack speed. Increased attack speed is great. They get 30% of your increased attack speed. Seems like an auto include. 
into Scent of Death, you would always use Scent of Death. I have damage to healthy here, which is really nice. And in fact, on a summon build, you could probably fit in more instances of like damage to injured enemies, which is typically a very low value stat. But as you saw, we're kind of fighting monsters for a long time and being able to speed up the end of the fight might be okay. We currently have Enviber in here so that when we're healthy, we get the additional damage. We'd probably want this to be more focused in adding on damage and an additional multiplier instead of that. But these were the boards that I had set up for my Bone Spear build. And like I said, I haven't leveled up the other glyphs yet, so I haven't quite slotted in everything that I would want there. I think that Cult Leader is like your best bang for your buck for your fourth board that you're going to fully invest into. A lot of them say minions. One says Skeleton Warriors, one says Skeleton Mages. So they're not all completely ubiquitous across your summons, but it gives you the most added benefit across all three of your summons when you have all three up this does work again proved it if you haven't seen my minions video i recommend checking that out but things that say minions means all three of them get it and that's pretty nice obviously you have skeleton warriors down here you have skeleton mages up here then you just have minion damage you got minion damage you got damage reduction for your minions here i currently have grave keeper Gravekeeper just seemed nice since the rare nodes seemed really good. And then on top of that, since there are typically so many corpses all the time, we are near perpetually getting that 12% uh, damage multiplier and they get 30% of that. So they're getting 4% damage multiplier as well. And then for the last board, I would like to get into Hulking Monstrosity in bare minimum, picking up this Golem Armor node so that they have the most survivability that they can possibly have. I don't necessarily know that our Golem really died at any point during that dungeon, so maybe this is completely unnecessary, and you literally just pick up the Legendary node, and then you worry about backfilling some of your other glyphs with more points so you can max out those benefits. And then let's go ahead and talk about the gear and the aspects. Again, gear, complete garbage on this character. Cannot stress this enough. The gear that you're about to see is going to be very bad, but I think that the aspect choices are smart, and I'll talk about the stats that I think that you should get on each gear piece. I'm using a two-handed weapon to get the two-handed bonus on our aspects, as well as that minions are going to gain a percentage of your weapon damage. It's different per minion type, so having the most damage on your weapon makes the most sense to me. On top of that, people have asked me, like, how does it scale with weapon attack speed? How does it scale with using a focus, etc.? I'm pretty sure that your minions gain your full damage value. So that can be a wand in an offhand, it can be a wand in a shield. Your weapon attack speed doesn't appear to scale their attack speed. They seem to have a base attack speed that gets increased by minion attack speed and 30% of your increased attack speed. So I think using a big two-hander just makes the most sense. I haven't tested it fully, so don't quote me on that. But if somebody finds out differently that like, hey, you need to use a wand, we'll swap it out. I'm using Grasping Veins here. Why are we using Grasping Veins? Well, we're permanently spamming corpse tendrils, so that makes sense to me. You would gain 40% critical strike chance. They would gain 30% of that, so that's 12% crit chance for them. When we crit against targets, them critting more often means that they will be gaining 40% additional crit damage against those same targets. On the weapon itself, you want vulnerable and crit. Why? They gain 30% of your crit damage and they gain 100% of your vulnerable damage. So vulnerable is by far the biggest overall scaler here and then crit. After that, any additive bonuses that make sense that would help them out. So even something like all stats so that they gain like 30% of the crit bonus that you get from that doesn't seem terrible. But damage to affected by shadow damage, since we're spamming that all the time, seems like a really good include. Damage to crowd controlled and then at worst damage to slowed since corpse tendrils also slows. For the boots, we have a lot of utility aspects to fit onto our build, so this is where we're slotting in Skeletal Mages, and then you just kind of want movement speed, movement speed, maybe dodge chance, uh, maybe damage reduction while injured. Basically, just pure movement speed is like good enough, and everything else is just kind of like gravy. You want your pants to say as many types of damage reduction as possible. Damage reduction, damage reduction, armor, and dodge. Ultimately, you'd want this to say maximum life as well. Instead of the dodge chance, they don't gain 30% of your maximum life, but that helps you to survive when inevitably a monster goes, I don't really care about your minions, and attacks you. Here we're putting on Shielding Storm, which is just by far the best defensive aspect the Necromancer has access to, so you'd want to run this on everything. And then we're using Howl From Below. I actually don't even think that Howl From Below is an automatic include on this build. I think that you could very easily get away with using gloves that say Lucky Hit Chance, Crit Chance, Attack Speed, and then like a good Lucky Hit ability like Chance to Apply Slow or something like that. And then you could put on an additional aspect for damage scaling. This is the worst piece of gear I've ever intentionally put onto my character. I cannot stress this enough. Uh, we were trying to go with the full Thorns build before this, hence why we rolled Thorns on it. It has maximum minion life, has summoning skill damage, and then damage reduction. Bare minimum, this should say max life, damage reduction from close, 
damage reduction potentially while fortified or just flat damage reduction, or armor, or summoning skill damage. I think you can probably fit summoning skill damage on this in general, and it's kind of like, eh, it's okay. This applies to all of your minions damage types. I don't think that you should be going for like extra thorns or anything like that. Like I think max minion health is also just a huge trap here. I don't think that you need it at all. And then again, since we need more utility slots, we have our skeleton warriors here. This is actually just a good helmet. Decrepified, cooldown reduction, total armor, maximum life, 10 out of 10 great helmet. And then here we're putting disobedience, which you should always have disobedience on every single build that you ever play in this game until they nerf it. The ring's bad, but on the ring, what I think that you should strive for is lucky hit chance, critical strike chance, vulnerable damage and maximum life as like your four best stats you could possibly get on this thing. Critical strike damage is a runner up to those four stats if you can't find anything else. And then good additive bonuses here. And then I do have reanimation so our skeletons are gaining more damage as they stay alive for longer. This is kind of like the best multiplier that we can put onto our skeletons at this point. You could go for a more generic multiplier something like retribution so that when a monster is stunned you do more damage to it and then they get 30% of that. But since we can fit this onto the build, we absolutely do. Again, basically the exact same thing that I just said. Here we have thorns, we have maximum minion life. There might be a world where because I have close to 100% maximum minion life on my gear, that's why they feel so good. And if you took it off, it might feel worse. So if you experience that, consider tossing it onto a ring like this. But this is where we have ultimate shadow. Ultimate shadow turns bone storm into a darkness skill. Darkness skill helps us to get shadow blight procced as fast as possible. And since we're using blighted on our amulet, getting that procced as fast as possible gives our minions 30% of the damage bonus. On top of that, just shadow blight is just phenomenal. It gives us 10% multiplicative damage with our minions. And then on top of that, it also procs a bunch of uh, instantaneous damage that can crit. So all in all, just like a great addition to the build. That's why we have ultimate shadow here. So we can proc this more often. Talking about the amulet, there are a lot of stats that you could have on your amulet. I think that this amulet is pretty good. Plus three to corpse skills means that corpse tendrils is up more often. Corpse explosion does more damage. And then because we get that fueled by death, we're getting that additional damage whenever we consume a corpse and they're getting 30% of it. I wish I could stop saying that, but anytime I don't specifically say it, somebody asks me. So I'm just going to keep repeating it. Then armor and cooldown reduction here are both really good. You could have damage reduction here as well, which would be kind of nice. And then there's also a world where maybe you don't worry about plus three to corpse skills and you go for Hellbent Commander. And if you're actually near your minions enough, that is a pretty big multiplier for their overall damage and probably what I would re-roll for here if I wanted to. But Blighted on the Amulet is our best secondary source of damage. We cast Corpse Tendrils so much more often than we have Blighted activated on us. So this is why it's on the weapon and this is why it's on the Amulet. You can interchange them if your play experience is different, but if your play experience is different, you're probably not playing this build. People were asking me while we were streaming this, how much better are minions? Are minions all of a sudden viable now? And I think if you just look at the change that they made in this balance patch, which says that you can effectively force your minions to engage in combat, you can get closer to playing like a true undead, like battle leader of an undead horde. Like you can do a true minion build because you can kind of force them to go attack targets that you want them to. What it also means is that you have the option to engage your army, force them to go attack somewhere, and then you can move your golem around as a second piece to be able to like more accurately target specific monsters. So in that way, it's become a bit more tactical. It's become a lot more engaging. And again, I can't quite prove this, but minion AI just seems a lot better than it was before. Like they are just engaging in combat even when curses aren't being dropped more effectively than they were. And I think that in general, that's just valuable enough to make the build feel a lot less clunky. Now I'll also say being able to target your minions and tell them to like, hey, go fight at least in that general area makes the Blood Surge version of this build so much better. It makes the Mandelon version of this build so much better. It basically makes every version of the Summon Necro better in general because you can be more proactive. It still runs into a lot of the issues that I think in general Summon Necromancer is currently running into. One, we can't target a specific monster. Again, this is a compromise that I see from the developers and I can't stress this enough. If you're watching, I see it, I appreciate it. I think this is as close as we can get to meshing these two concepts together until hopefully eventually you give us a way of targeting. But we're still running into a lot of the same issues. 
how do I fit enough skills on my bar when both my skeletons and my golem take up a skill slot? I don't think that this has been addressed. I'm not sure that it's going to be addressed, but I would really like to see both minions be put to one skill slot. I would love to be running Army of the Dead right now because I think thematically that's more in line with like the summon Necromancer. But there's no way for you to fit it into the build and have it be functional while also being like this thorn summoner, because the best way to play the game is to apply vulnerable and apply crowd control so that monsters can't attack you, which means that thorns is effectively useless. So if I can't use the army of the dead because it doesn't give me like enough versatility and it requires too many things to actually be good and takes up too many aspects, of course I'm going to use bone storm because bone storm is one of the skills that fits into every single build, oddly enough. Also makes my golem more effective. On top of that, healing the minions at this level you never really saw me actively healing my minions in combat, which is good. It means that they're not dying, but it also means that I'm super disincentivized from spamming this skill when I'm too busy, also spamming my Decrepify and also spamming my Golem and also spamming my Corpse Tendrils and also spamming my Corpse Explosion. I don't have enough time to juggle all of like these conditional modifiers that I would put onto my skeletons because healing them with this also gets them a bit of a damage boost, which is like, cool, that's great. But this is so much like lower value than just maintaining constant Decrepify on, up on everything, constantly spamming my Golem, constantly spamming Corpse Explosions. I literally couldn't fit the animations in to make this worthwhile because crowd controlling and making sure I'm staying alive is infinitely more valuable than giving my skeletons a little bit of a boost. The other issue, there are so many stats that you think, oh, if I'm a minion build, I should have this. Maximum minion life, summoning skill damage. These don't allow the Necromancer to survive. There was a one point where I was running through and I might have edited it out that a cannibal just jumped on top of me and just one shot me, just straight up killed me. And it's not like I don't have damage reduction on this build. I have a decent amount of armor with disobedience up. This is over 10K. I have dodge chance. I have damage reduction, damage reduction, damage reduction, damage reduction, walked up and one shot me because my armor doesn't say defensive stats. And there's no way for me to actually warrant putting on stats that just say my minions do more damage or my minions gain more life and survivability or more thorns. Quick segue, why is it skeleton warrior, skeleton mage, and golem are three different affixes where they receive more of my thorns value? Why isn't it just summons receive thorns damage? How would I ever possibly stack all these stats onto my character? I don't know physically how, but the fact that empowering your summons comes at a direct deficit of making your Necromancer do more damage and become more tanky just means that you're doomed to never be able to push high tier content without going at an absolute snail space. And while my list of gripes is pretty big, I will say felt a lot better than it's ever felt before. Didn't expect to survive the tier 61 on this crap gear. Sincerely, it was slow, but functional. So. If you're interested in this build, I guess I'll put together like a max roll planner, at least for now. This might be what I base the summoner endgame build off of. When I get that written, we will have one for season one, so don't worry about that. I will not give you a timeline. Don't ask a million times. Please don't harass me. It's going to take a while. It's going to take a while. By season one, I'll have it done. Just please respect that. I think it still has a, like a big long way to go, but at least for right now, feels okay. If you've been looking for a summoner build, try it out. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you've been messing with. I'd love to hear from you. Thank you so much to everybody who was in chat, who was kind of letting me ping pong ideas off of them. And lastly, uh, yes, you would absolutely like use Mendelm on this build. 100% of the time, you should absolutely use it. It's a phenomenal ring. It'll drastically increase your clear speed. Just know that your minions aren't doing damage. It's the ring doing damage. That's it. That's what I got for you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that you enjoyed it or helped or just like in general gave you some information that you didn't have before. And I look forward to seeing you in the next video.